can erase those things on the board first. So let's move on to the next slide. After you get the so-called the new interval, you can calculate two interior points, which we call x1 and x2. However, like I told you, among those two interior points, for this case, you only need to calculate the new interior point x1. And that x1 can be calculated based on the formula that we already explained, developed in the previous uh, lecture. So you plug in the numerical value, the new x logo bound now is equal to 0 0.6. The new upper bound is still the same as before, which is 1.5708. And therefore, you can calculate the, in the new interior point x1 is equal to this value, 1.2. Now, once you know the new upper bound, which is equal to the same as the old upper bound, 1.57. And once you know the new lower bound, which is 0 0.6, you can c calculate the length of that new interval, which is a difference between the upper bound and lower bound. And that turned out to be 0 0.97. And then you compare that new interval, you compare, you say, is that smaller or equal to the tolerance that you say 0 0.05. This 0 0.05 is specified by the user. If it is true, then you stop. Otherwise, you keep doing again and again. Okay, so that is the so-called golden section that we have is up to now. All right. Now, let's see what happens if we do more iteration. So to see that, let's go to the next slide. In iteration 2, now remember in iteration 2, you have the new x lower bound and the new, the, you have the new lower bound and the new upper bound, 0 0.6 and 1.5708. Based on that, you calculate the two interior points, x1 and x2. But remember, out of those two points, one of them you already got it. So you only need to calculate one new point. Okay? And as soon as you know the two interior points, x1 and x2, you can calculate the function value at those two interior points. And then you compare. Okay. So when you compare, you can see that. Right now, this is your lower lower bound, and the upper bound is right here. When you insert the two interior points, which are called x1 and x2, they are here, the green one, and here. Then, the next one that you say is you compare the pattern. So what you see to go from the lower bound to this guy, the function go up a little bit. And to go from this point to the next point, it go down. The pattern is changed. So when the pattern is changed, that's telling you that in the next iteration, this should be the new upper bound. This should be the new upper bound. And this should be the new lower bound. So you can see in the first iteration the, n the length of the interval between the lower bound and upper bound is very big, like from here to there. In iteration 2, the length of the interval is a little bit smaller be between here and there. And then in the next iteration, the length of the interval become even shorter from here to there. So you can see for each iteration, 
when you adjust the new lower bound upper bound you will see the length of the interval getting smaller and smaller and you keep doing that until it is small enough then you stop okay so because the function at x1 is less than the function at x2 therefore you can establish which is the lower bound upper bound like I just explained to you and then you will calculate the two interior point but keep in mind one of them you already got it before so now at the end of the second iteration all you have to do is just to take the average the midpoint the average of the current lower bound upper bound you take the average and that will give you the estimation of the angle theta at the end of the second iteration so at the end of the second iteration theta equal to 0 0.9 radian okay so let me erase this and I move on to the next slide which is probably the last one for this lecture so let me erase the board first okay let me erase the board first and go to the next slide now the next slide what I show you is not only for two iteration but it keep doing until converge so let me explain to you very briefly in the beginning iteration one you can see we come up with the initial guess for the so-called lower bound for the angle is zero radian upper bound for the angle theta is pi over two which is the same thing as 1.5714 radian based on those uh, initial lower bound and upper bound which by the way we know how to calculate those initial lower bound upper bound using the lecture that I provided before this example uh, lecture based on the lower bound and the upper bound 0 and 1.57 radian we can calculate the two interior point x1 and x2 and as soon as we know x1 and x2 you can figure out the function evaluate at x1 and the function evaluate at x2 now when you compare function at x1 because it is bigger than a function at x2 therefore in the next iteration you only have to update the lower the new lower bound which is 0 0.6 the new upper bound is the same as the previous iteration and then based on the new lower bound which is 0 0.6 upper bound 1.57 again you're supposed to calculate two interior point x1 and x2 however as you can see that x2 already exists before which play the role of x1 and that's why in this iteration 2 you only need to calculate x1 location which is 1.2 and again you compare the function at x1 this time it happened to be less than the function at x2 and because of that reason in the next iteration the new upper bound is unchanged the same as the previous iteration but the new lower bound is updated and then based on the new lower bound upper bound we calculate the two interior point x1 and x2 but keep in mind again for these two point x2 already exists in the previous iteration and that's why you only need to calculate the new x1 and in the process you f you compare function x1 with function x2 and you keep doing that until when you hit let's say iteration number eight at that time you see the epsilon which give you the so-called the interval length the interval length interval length which basically it gives you this is if this is alpha upper bound this is alpha lower bound 
the interval length is just equal to alpha u minus alpha l. That will give you the interval length. And you know the optimum point must be somewhere between that interval length. So at the iteration 8, the interval length, which is like the alpha upper bound subtract alpha lower bound, is 0 0.0541. And by the way, the reason you get this number 0 0.0541 is because you subtract these two numbers right here at the iteration 8. You see, the upper bound is 1.70794, subtract the lower bound 1.0253, then you get the interval length 0 0.05. Unfortunately, that interval length is still not satisfy the requirement that it has to be less than 0 0.05 as you specify. So you have to do, let's say, one more iteration, iteration 9. And at the end iteration 9, you see the interval length is 0 0.03, which is satisfy the conversion criteria, which has to be less than 0 0.05, so you stop. So that means golden section will converge after 9 iteration, and therefore, the answer should be the midpoint or halfway between this lower bound, upper bound. And that midpoint is calculated to be equal to 1.04. So that should be the answer for theta optimum, the one that will give you uh, maximize the area of the gutter. And the function or the area of the gutter corresponding to that theta should be 5.196. Now, interesting enough, if you compare with the exact answer, uh, the exact answer will give you the angle theta should be 60 degree, which is the same thing as 1.0472 radian. And that number, exact answer, as you can see, is very close to the golden section after 9 iteration. And the area, the exact area of the gutter from analytical derivation is 5.1962. And that number is very close to the answer that we got from the golden section. So I believe this is the so-called the end of the example of the golden section method. So let me erase this. And let's see what should be the next slide. Uh, let me erase this also for you to make it look cleaner. And then, as you can see, the next slide is at the end of this lecture. Acknowledgement. Uh, more information you can find over there.